Hello, quick video on using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial or a Poisson. And this is probably something that's historic before we had lovely calculators that would do all of this for us. And if you hadn't got that, sometimes it was easy to use our normal distribution and tables to calculate the properties for our binomial or a Poisson. And here's an example why it works below. The blue line is a sort of binomial, isn't it there? And the red line is the normal um, for um, approximating the same situation. So when is, the, when is this reliable? Well, there's two things that are important that our parent distribution, the binomial or binomial, must be roughly symmetric and not too chunky in the blocks in there so our end's reasonably high. So let's go through and have a look, starting with a binomial. OK, so if we want to approximate a binomial, we need a large n value and we need p to be probably to be somewhere near 0.5, not out at 0.1 or 0.9. So like this example here, which is quite close or probably is 0 0.5. So everything looks very neat and the end's quite large. So we've got it's not too chunky, but not like this one here where we've got a very chunky distribution. So you can see the gaps between our red and normal and our blue binomial there, n equals 5. And this one here, where our binomial has got a p of 0 0.1, so it's very heavily skewed, isn't it, to the left there, so positive skew. And our red line is quite a way to the right of it, isn't it, our, our normal approximation there. OK. Let's use an example just to see what we're going to do. Here, let's have a look at a biased dice. So we're going to roll a dice 100 times. We believe it's biased and it's got a P of 0 0.4. What's the probability of getting 50 or less heads? Well, if we were doing that as a, a binomial, we just there's our binomial, and we just find the probability that x is less than or equal to 50. If we're going to convert it into a normal, we need a mean and standard deviation to put into our normal. Well, the mean of a the mean of a binomial is NP. So in this case, that would be 40. The standard deviation of a binomial is the square root of NPQ. So in this case, that will be 4.899. And we're going to feed those into our normal we're going to use there we are so our mean is going to be 40 and our standard deviation is going to be 4.899 okay there's one other thing we need to bear in mind and this is called a continuity correction okay so when we're operating with a discrete we've got a lot of these points so here are x values here so we could either have uh, 49 50 51 or 52 couldn't we in our um, calculations? Excuse me, I'm just going to move that up so we can see it a bit better. Here we go. OK. Um, and we get a series of discrete probabilities here for each one, wouldn't we, for each of these outcomes. But we're going to approximate it using the red line. That's our normal red line, yeah? And we need to find the area under the um, distribution at the right value. Now, our problem is we've got quite big gaps here, haven't we, between 50 and 51 here. And the, issue, the question is what we're going to do with the area between the two. Well, in fact, what we're going to do is effectively find a midpoint and we're going to split that area so that a bit like we would do if we were doing rounding, everything to the left of 50.5, our midpoint, that area is going to be in the area we're interested in over here, which is yeah, the less than. And everything above it, above 50.5, is going to be on the other side of it. And we're going to treat that as being sort of greater than. So in practice, we end up rather than using 50.5, 50, sorry, as our as our um, x value to put into our z, we're going to use 50.5 because that means we've used all the area and we've attributed the area correctly. OK, so we're going to calculate our z. That's going to be our next step. Here we go, using our standard formula for z. Um, and now our x value here for the midpoint that we use is 50.5. Take away 40, which is the mean and divide by 4.899 which is our standard deviation and we get a z value of plus 2.14 in this case if we feed that into our normal um, 
that value plus eight, we're going to get this probability. So let's do that on a calculator just to convince ourselves. Here we go. So here we've got a normal. Um, our lower bound is a big negative number as ever. Our upper bound is going to be 2.14. We're using a standard normal, so the standard deviation is 1 and the mean is 0. Press the execute button, there we have 0 0.9838. So I've rounded that to 984, so there's 984. There we go. Just out of interest, how does that compare to the precise answer on the binomial? Well, in our calculators these days, we can just go in again. Distribution, binomial, BCD. So here we were interested in, <clears throat> excuse me, 50. It's a number of values, isn't it? Number of trials was 100, and I'll probably a 0.4. So the precise answer is 0.983. So we were very close by, weren't we here? Okay. Now let's have a look at using a normal um, to approximate a Poisson. Okay, <clears throat> here we want a Poisson which is roughly symmetric. Well, that means we've got to have quite a large lambda. <clears throat> That's what controls symmetry in these, isn't it? So here we've got lambda equals 20, and here our blue line for the Poisson is quite close to our red line for the normal, isn't it? There's still a bit of a difference between the two because the Poisson's always going to have some skew in it. But compare that to the one here where our lambda is... Um, 0.2. Our red line, our approximate normal, is miles away from our Poisson, so we're not going to get very reliable answers, are we? Okay. <clears throat> now let's use an example. Here, I've um, got a business centre. It's expecting 20 calls per hour on average. And what's the probability of receiving 30 or more calls? Okay. First thing we have to do then is to convert our normal into a Poisson, so our Poisson into a normal. We need to work out the mean of our normal. Well, um, the mean is going to be lambda. So that's going to be 20. And the standard deviation is going to be the square root of lambda, which can, um, because that's what it is for a Poisson. And that's going to be square root of 20. It's 4.72. So here is our normal. So we're all good to go with that. But again, we've got to do our continuity correction. So let's just have a quick look at that. Here we are. And here, we were interested in 30 or more, weren't we? So 30, 31, etc. So the question is, where are we going to cut our line? There's 29 there. Well, 29 is very much less. Um, it's definitely not in the 30 or more, is it? So what we're going to do is our midpoint, we're going to create there, is going to be 29.5, because that's halfway between 21, which is 29, which is not in our area, and 30, which is in our area. And again, we're going to find the um, criteria rather. And again, we're going to find the area um, from 29.5 or more. That's going to be the X value we're going to put in for our Z. So here we are with our formula again. And we're going to have our X value. Critical X value is 29.5. We're measuring how far it is away from our mean of 20 and dividing by our standard deviation of 4. Point. 472, so we get a Z of plus 2.012. And therefore, if we want to calculate that, we're looking for a more 2.12 or more, aren't we? So let's go back into our normal distribution, distribution, normal, NCD. This time, 2.12 is going to be our lower bound, isn't it? Our upper bound is going to be a very large positive number. Again, we're doing a standard deviation, uh, standard setup of the uh, normal, so that's uh, sigma of 1 and mu of 0. And here we have a probability of 0 0.017. There we go. Um, let's just quickly check that out against the precise answer if we use the Poisson. So let's pop up and have a look again. Exit, exit, distribution, uh, by the Poisson's off the end here. There is Poisson within PCD. We're going to have to do one minus here, aren't we? Because in Poisson, we can only go um, from the left-hand end, a bit like binomial. So what we have to do is, let's just check here. We're looking for the property that x is greater than or equal to 30. And to calculate that, we have to do the 
probability in one minus, so the complementary probability that x is less than or equal to 29. So let's put that in our calculator. So our x is going to be 29, and our mean is 20 here. So we just push our button. There we go, 0 0.978 there. And 1 minus it is 0 0.22. So there's a bit of a gap here, isn't there, between 0 0.22 and 0 0.17. But they're very pretty, well, yeah, out of a, out of a full probability of 1, that's pretty close, isn't it? OK. And finally, here's my little summary. Um, we can use the normal approximation where the parent is roughly symmetric and smooth. Use... Uh, for a normal, we need our n to be large, greater than 10, and p to be near 0 0.5, not out there at 0.1 or 0.9. And then we're just going to take our uh, mean and standard deviation for a binomial, mp and square root of mpq, and use those in our normal. For a Poisson, we need um, lambda to be large, i greater than 10, to give us some resemblance of symmetry. Then our mean is going to be lambda, and our standard deviation is going to be the square root of lambda. Those are the figures for a uh, Poisson distribution. And continuity correction. Remember to go halfway between the discrete values. You're finding the midpoint of the discrete values, and use that as the x value to put into your z and to do your calculation. Hope that's of use.